goes like this. The 2020's been out for seven or eight years. It's had a lot of reviews. It's got a great reputation. And it's a good candidate for now. Because the story is, what, where's the 2020 fit in the world now? Because the usual story is, oh, newer, better, latest. And this is a different, it was done very well the first time. And, and I'm not going to change it for no reason, for something new. Because a lot of times people muck it up when they do that. I mean, quite mm -hmm. often. And I, I'm very disciplined. That's what I've learned over the years, is to be disciplined and to do what I think is the best choice and not be marketing pressures. And that can be a marketing advantage. By being contrary to the market, it gives you a better marketing story, I guess. I'll say that. <laughs> and you all can agree or not. And it, it's quite all right, you know. Uh, and so, See, I haven't seen the inside of one of these for years. Mm -hmm. else, you know, but as I look at this, I wouldn't change a thing. I, I just wouldn't. If there was something to change to make it better, I would change it. Because it's, I think, the best expression of the values that's designed to. Now, that doesn't mean I can't make other products that express other things, but this is the best expression of what this can be. And so, and, and, and like reasonable price. So, dual mono gets tossed around a lot, and so this is, this is a true expression of dual mono. These boards are exactly identical. Exactly. You have two outboard power supplies that plug in here, the only difference in these boards is where you put the light and where you put the power connector. The board is laid out for either. You solder them here or there. That's the only difference between left and right. <coughs> the power entry is up here, logically. It's like you put the gas cap where the fuel tank is. It comes in here, and it goes through all this filtering. It uses an external power supply. If we wanted to be vulgar, we could call it a Walmart. <laughs> okay, if we want to be more uppity, we call it a bench top supply. <laughs> yeah. I, I like bench top supply. Yeah, and that's, that's the freestanding power supplies like on our laptop and such. But in any case, it's an outboard switch and supply. It's of high quality. I think the mean time between failure is something like 700,000 hours. That's 70 years. And it's used at a tenth of its capacity, so it could be longer. Could be less. I don't know. It sounds like a bogus number to me, but you know, <laughs> that's what they say. Good enough. And so that that is not a very expensive way to do a first cut in the power supply. And it's all safety approved, and this, that, and the other. So I can, no concerns. But it's not a great power supply for audio. Oh my gosh! I mean, it's got ripple and stuff. But I filter that out with RC filtering. By the time it gets to the audio, it's as clean as the battery powered modules. And that's when I decided not to do batteries anymore, but to phase them out because I can get physical separation and electrical separation for the incoming power. Oh, this is an external 40 volt power supply, same one used in the Vibe. It's pulled them out of the same bins. And the 48 volt power supply is a, um, an attribute that other folks don't have on their outboard power supplies. So their wall wards might be 15 volts or 18. I don't know how high is it, 24? I've never seen more than 24. I've seen 24, I've seen 18s. Oh, you've seen 18s, okay. So that's, that's good because you got your, you're under the hood a lot more than I. So 18 volts. Well, you got 18 volts in front, plus and minus rails. The best you can do is plus and minus. You don't have any room for filtering. You don't have any room for regulation. Now, I dropped 48 volts down to 30. I've got 18 volts to throw away on filtering. I've got a big margin. And now I end up with 30 volts for the op amps, and they're starting at 18. Hmm. 
You know, so the voltage, the circuits are already starved for voltage and headroom. And the thing is, these kind of design decisions, it is so much more important to make good design decisions than it is to throw money at something. I do not go for profligate spending and throw money at something. Just think, you know, make better choices. And my filtering, you know, there's this notion about electronic coloration of the regulators. You've probably heard discussions of that sort, or I'm sure I've been in, and maybe other folks. But the sound of the regulator, you know, because regulators are always trying to fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it, fix it. I don't have any uh, electronic regulators here. It's passive, RC, 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 resistor capacitor. It's a cascade of low pass filters. So all the noise, it's gone down here, and I just keep it going. So that would be the water analogy would be if you had a, a reservoir, a dam, a reservoir, a dam, a reservoir, a dam, a reservoir, a dam. Pretty soon, you don't know if it's raining today or not. I mean, the isolation is big. And this is... It's that simple. A reservoir of resistance. A reservoir of resistance. And so these reservoirs are isolated from each other, and the current kind of works through that, but hell, it might take a minute or two to fill up the reservoirs. And you take off the AC, and it may take a minute for it to figure that out. Hmm. So it's, it's that, that reservoir, you know, I, I try to have analogies, and you don't maybe you have to tell your customers all this stuff, but it gives you confidence in it, you know? And so at the last reservoir, I don't have a pressure regulator. I have a spillway. Okay, and any excess water goes over the spillway, and the pressure at the bottom is constant. So if you have a water column, the pressure at the bottom is constant, as long as the height doesn't vary. Well, these zener diodes have that spillway function. Any extra voltage gets converted to heat by the zeners. So it's a spillway. Electrically very inefficient, but very efficient at doing our high-end job. So, two-thirds of the board area, clean power. The rest is all tightly packed in here for minimal um, I, I, I like a simple circuit, I like a simple layout, I like a clean layout. I don't want stuff rambling all over tarnish, as you see so many things are doing. Here's the input jack. It goes right to the loading resistors. Here's where you select the loading resistors. Here's the gain chip. Gain resistors right there by it. Signal goes over to a servo, last gain stage, and out. So it's just a very simple U-shaped layout. Mm -hmm. And it's, uh, I think, a very uh, uh, visually appealing, orderly deal. And but it's, it's also driven by function. It's mainly driven by functionality. So sure we're going to say feng shui. <laughs> hmm. <laughs> See, I, I'm really, I'm really not so. Um, um, I don't, I don't really kind of go down that path very much. I, I'm not that much of an audiophile. <laughs> Ron, how did you I, I'm a gearhead. I'd rather do engineering. You know? How yeah. did you select what your uh, what your main design was based on a certain cartridge you were trying to get the most out of, or do you test each piece on on your assembly line with different cartridges to verify? I'm not going down that path really? because I, I mean that's not how I do it, and and I know that's the conventional story. Yeah, and that's I. I don't know how to do that. That's not how I. It's not how I think. It's not how I do. I do. I do good engineering, and I. Uh, I want to be technically correct, <coughs> technically optimized, technically the the smallest, technically a tiny traces to keep the dielectric out. Of the, technically, I use first class, good components, not all your components. Technically, I use op amps for the very for their precision, and their repeatability, and their reliability, and their availability. 
And op amps, this op amp, here's, here's my lapse of judgment, is $25 for an op amp. I can op amp for 25 cents, you know, but I spent $25 because I wanted to work better. For $25, I can give you a big handful of parts. That is not a better choice. Hmm. Handful of parts, my board's gonna grow. The signal path's gonna grow. The complexity's gonna grow. The matching's gonna grow. The expenses of assembly are gonna grow. It's gonna be a diminished product because I'm trying to compete with other folks with that kind of storyline. Thank you.